Welcome back to TK Tennis. So let's break down the ridiculous call that was made at the Cincinnati Open between Jack Draper and Felix Auger Alassim. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, but F A A. This was on Match Point. Let me quickly set the scene. Uh, because I can't show you the entire video due to copyright infringement. So this is Jack Draper. He just hit a serve, and he's moving into the net to hit a serve and volley. So let's play it forward and watch what happens. So the return is hit very low over the net, and then you can tell because Jack Draper is moving his racket down towards the ball. He sees the return is coming low. And as we move this forward, here comes the ball. It, it's incoming. You can see the ball being very low. Now let's quickly set the stage what a legitimate shot could look like. The ball can hit the ground first, bounce just before the racket, hit the racket, whether it hits the frame or not is irrelevant, or if it hits the strings cleanly, that's irrelevant. This would be a half volley. So it would hit the ground, then deflect up, hit his racket, and go over the net. That would be a fair and proper shot. Or the ball could be incoming. Jack could move the racket forward and he could catch the ball in the air. And then it would go back over the net and hit a clean volley. What can't happen is the ball cannot move forward, hit the racket, then hit the ground, and then go over the net. This is not ping pong. You can't hit the ground after you struck the ball with your racket. So let's move it forward and see what happens. You can see that the ball is, looks like low, and right here is where it contacts the racket first. Now you might say it might be hitting the ground first, but just look at the tail of the ball first from the frame. You can see the ball came here and then down. That there's a tail of the ball from this still image that shows the ball was a little bit higher and then hit the ground and moved up and then it goes forward. And let's now watch this in full speed to give you a better sense of what happened. And you can see it in the slow motion replay here. See that? Hits the racket, then hits the ground. One more time. That is like a ping pong serve and that's not a fair and legitimate shot. Now one more thing to notice is watch Jack Draper's eyes as he's striking the ball. You can see his eyes and he may not be looking directly down at the ball and that's what he claimed to the umpire is that he didn't see it and he's not sure what happened and that may be true he may have not seen it and we can say okay maybe he did not see it but sight is not the only sense you have here. If you're an experienced player, these situations have happened to you thousands of times throughout your practice and playing careers, and the player always knows. And you don't have to believe me. Listen to Roger Federer. He has also said on numerous occasions that the player always knows. It's not that difficult because it's not just about sight. It's also about sound and feel and sense. And if Jack would have hit this ball, so while Jack may have not have seen it, what he certainly did feel is that the ball hit the racket first. He would have felt that first, and then he would have heard it and sensed it hit the ground first and foremost. And if it would have hit the ground first as a half volley, he would have heard that, felt that, possibly even felt it, and then felt it hit his racket after he heard it hit the bounce. So the player always knows these senses. It's not just about sight. So while Jack may have been telling the truth that he didn't see it, he was being disingenuous. But let's not give Jack too much grief. It is not his obligation in terms of fairness. Is he responsible for calling the own, his own shots or is it the responsibility of a chair umpire? Of course, it's the responsibility of, of, responsibility of the chair umpire. So while he didn't cheat, technically cheat, and do anything technically wrong in terms of the rules, you can certainly question his character and his judgment. This match was called in his favor because the chair umpire called it game, set, and match. After he hit the shot, it hits the net and just dribbles over, and the chair umpire awards the match to Jack Draper. If this was 
Carlos Alcaraz or Rafa Nadal or Yannick Sinner, you can be assured that they would have called this on themselves and said, I did not pick up the ball cleanly. And they would have played, they would have given the point away to their opponent and had an opportunity to still close out this match. So while he didn't cheat by the letter of the rules, you certainly can question his character and his judgment. If he wants to win that way, I'll let you decide if that's the proper way to win a match. That's what he chose to do. He knew it. There's no doubt in the world that he knew what he was doing. And maybe that's okay in your book. Now let's quickly switch gears to Greg Allensworth, the chair umpire. The reason you're a chair umpire is to be a judge in difficult situations. And in the last few weeks, he's shown to have very poor judgment. He's been the chair umpire in multiple ridiculous decisions in the past couple of weeks. And the simple fact in this specific case is if you've been doing this job for a while, you know what a mishit half volley looks like, which is a legitimate shot, even if it hits the frame, or a mishit volley looks like. When you also know what it looks like when a ball either double bounces and hits the court twice, or in this case, when it hits the frame first, then hits the ground. You can tell by the trajectory of the ball and the spin of the ball. He clearly has poor judgment. You can say he's human and he just made a mistake. Well, you need people in these positions that have good judgment and make as few mistakes as possible. Now, let's place blame even higher up. So while this was really bad judgment, and maybe he shouldn't even be a chair umpire if he's continually making these mistakes, but there's even someone higher up to blame, and that's the ATP Tour. This is a simple, in other sports you have where you can look at replays, you can take it to the tournament referee or into a special booth where they can see these things. And when it's match point or these critical times, a simple check of the replay, which you have within seconds, can be referenced, should be able to be referenced, and override the chair umpire when he makes a ridiculous call like this. The players should have an opportunity to possibly challenge something and to be able to look at the replay. So there seems to be a systemic problem at the ATP tour level by not having their rules in place and doing the right thing. And I just want to give a quick shout out to Felix Auger Alassim. I know I'm pronouncing that wrong for handling this with such class and dignity. I am blown away how well he handled this. Most players would have lost their minds on this situation, but he handled it with class, even though he was robbed of potentially having an opportunity to win this match. He called out the chair umpire and asked him very explicitly, are you sure you want to make this, this decision? Because you're going to look ridiculous in five minutes from now. And of course, ego gets in the way of the chair umpires, or in this case, this tournament referee. Just reference the replay and make the right decision. You owe it to all of these fans and all the viewers on TV to make the right call and to just take a step back instead of making tennis look like a mockery. And a quick shout out to FAA. Um, he's not my favorite player to watch play tennis, but in terms of class, this guy is a sportsman and a class act, and he proved it again. The way he hand, handled this very difficult situation with total class was impressive. I don't know many players that would have handled it this way. Um, he even shook Jack Draper's hand, even though he knew and he called Jack Draper out, knowing that Jack knew what happened. He still sh shook his hand, which I don't think I could have done. And he challenged the tournament referee in a very professional manner, even though this was a big match for FAA, who's been trying to resurrect his career in the past year. To FAA, you are a class act. Congratulations to you. And and let's hope this situation forces change in the future, even though I'm sure many of us are not holding our breath. Due to copyright restrictions, I could not show the whole clip here. So the link is in the description. You can find this video to watch the entire clip and see the player's perspective and the discussion with the chair umpire. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next days.